Hello friends, welcome back. Module number nine. I apologize about the other module eight. I thought I was going to cover um, pages 10 and 11, but as you can see there was quite a bit in there. So we're going to go with page 11 now. Uh, I want to make sure that you get the biggest bang for your buck. Okay, and actually, you know, I, I play around, but no, food safety is absolutely serious, guys. And we, we ended up covering quite a bit with respect to food allergens and um, um, responding to a, a foodborne illness outbreak. So I, I, I jest, I kid around, but, uh, but it's absolutely a life and death situation. So we're on page 11 and we are looking at the safe food handler, right? The safe food handler, right? Because everybody that comes in contact with food has a critical job, okay? Um, why does everybody have a critical job? It's like literally right on the top of page 11, okay? Because we all have, so why is it so critical, right? And, it's, and I love that it's the very first line item. Actually, we're gonna, we're gonna stay there, right? So, look at that. Food handlers. And believe it or not, that also includes people that, the, the bus boys, right? That run dishes back and forth because their hands are coming in contact with those plates. Food handlers have the potential to do what? Have the potential to blank food when they have been, oh, I'm not giving you answers, right? When they have been <laughs> Look at that. You want to play hangman? There's quite a bit of information that belongs in there, right? So what are we saying? Right? Food handlers have the potential to what do you think? I have, food, I, have, I have something, I have the potential to contaminate food when they have been diagnosed with a, go back to your book, right? So what are we talking about? If you remember some time ago, the, uh, the, the, the big five illnesses, what do we refer to it as? Perfect. HES. HES N or send sick employees home now. Okay, so what is a manager's job? So go down to the next one. So this is where, you're, where you come in, right? This is why your job is absolutely critical. I got that you're in high school. Well, we're talking about adult work, okay? You are in high school doing adult work. So managers must focus on, managers must focus on, and then it's got five bullets. One, two, three, four, five. What are the five things managers, managers must fo focus on? Okay. Personal, and I'm going to truncate them because they're a, long, a little long. Personal hygiene policies. So personal hygiene policies. Right now I'm wearing two of the personal hygiene policies. I'm telling you right now, I'm not wearing shoes, okay? I'm barefoot. 
But if I was wearing shoes, what would be the best shoes to wear, right? So um, that that's that would be for for um, personal protection equipment (PPE), not for this. So a personal hygiene policy means this: I'm covering my hair with a baseball cap, right? Can I wear a baseball cap when I'm cooking? Yes. What is the condition for the baseball cap? And I intentionally showed white to show that the cap is actually, other than a little, you know, smudge from my skin, right? It is a, what kind of a baseball cap other than white? It is a clean baseball cap, right? I've got my, my, my polo, right? I intentionally wore white. Right? To show that it is what? It is clean. I am ready to go to work. So a personal hygiene policy not only means I am clean, right? I took a shower, my nails are short, right? No, no fingernail polish, no fake nails, right? No jewelry. In my case, I don't even have a band on, a plain metal band. Those are all part of your personal hygiene policies. So your job, you don't even have to create it because it's already there, you have to really implement it. The book says create, but there's no need to create anything. We know what's safe and we know what's not. An apron, I have the apron over there. It's white. Okay, so um, that's what we're talking about. Number two, train food handlers on personal hygiene policies and retraining them regularly, right? So step two is training and retraining, meaning we never stop learning, right? It's a, it's a perpetual process. Number three, model correct behavior, right? So I'm a teacher, right? What kind of, what kind of behavior should I be modeling? Should I be drink, bringing drugs and alcohol to the school? Should I be doing things that a teacher would normally not do? Are there teachers like that? Absolutely, sure. Right? No doubt. But is that modeling correct behavior? No. Right? So if I don't model correct behavior, what kind of behavior can I expect from my team members? Horrible behavior. Right? So you are the food manager. You've got to model correct behavior. Right? Model correct behavior, which is another way of saying role modeling, right? Um, the next one, supervising food safety practices. So you've got to do your job, right? Supervise, supervise, supervise food safety practices, supervise personal hygiene, supervise or conduct the training. You've got to be you've got to be ready for that job. Okay? And then the last one is revise when hygiene policies when laws or science change, right? So, you've got to be able to update by keeping yourself what? By keeping yourself informed. So that's, that's the big, the big, the gist of it. This is what your jobs are going to be. Right now, I'm putting all this inside of your head to prepare you for a very adult job. Okay? Remember, 14 to 18 year olds typically are not earning their food manager certification. Okay? So you're blessed to be in this position right now. Then the book goes into the next one. I'm, I'm going to just speak about it, but... It, it has to do with personal hygiene policies and modeling correct behavior and supervising. It has to do with all of this. So your other job, in order to, to be able to maintain a safe food handler, we said that most foodborne illness contamination occurs on food via what? What, can, what contaminates food almost all of the time? Right? Yes. Our hands. Right? Whether we have gloves on or not, our hands, these paws, are the biggest culprit to food safety. 
So again, I, 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 I advised you in the beginning I was going to repeat certain things as they are that critical. So hot water, okay, if you need a number, we had said 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Switch colors, right? We said scrub or lather with soap for how long? And we said 10 seconds. And then the last one, and I'll use, I'll just use green just to change the color. Um, total hand washing. And we had said was 20 seconds. Right? So that's, that's part of this job. This job encompasses quite a bit. The other thing we had said is that you can only wear one piece of jewelry, right? And that one piece of jewelry is a plain band, right? So one piece of jewelry and that is a plain band slash ring. So that's it, right? Can I, can I work if I've gotten a cut on my finger? Can I work if I had a cut on my finger? The answer, if you remember, is, what was the answer? Can I work with a cut? The answer was, whoops, it is. The answer was yes, as long as it's not pussing, oozing, infected, nasty, gooey, drippy, right? So I would need, if I have a cut on my finger, okay, so I'm going to put the word cut, right? I would need a band-aid, and then I would need a finger cut, which is basically um, a little, a little bandage that basically is like a one finger glove and it would cover that finger and then over that I would put on and I'm just going to use red because I don't have any more colors to go through then your, your gloves, right? So then your glove would cover the entire hand once you have that on. So those are not cuts. I apologize for the, for the color. But can I work with a cut? Yes. I need a bandage. I need to take care of that cut. I need to clean it out. So again, the safe food handler. I'm leaving this down here because it's still critical. Right? Hand antiseptics. Can I use hand antiseptics? Right? So, hand antiseptics. Antiseptics, did I spell that correctly? And antiseptics, yes, slash sanitizer, right? So, can I use hand sanitizer in place of hand washing? Can I skip the hand washing process? We're too busy, I'm just going to go hand sanitize myself and get back to work. No, hand washing is absolutely Mandatory hand washing is king. Why does hand sanitizer by itself not work? Because hand sanitizer will not, will not remove dirt. It will not remove grease. It will not remove protein. It will not remove a lot of stuff, right? So hand washing first, hand antiseptics hand or hand sanitizer after the fact, okay? And what are the conditions for hand sanitizer? The conditions are that hand sanitizers must be FDA approved, okay? The cheapest one is gonna be your best option. The one without colors, the one that doesn't smell like cherry or strawberry or some kind of like fall colors or seasonal color, uh, seasonal uh, aromas, I mean, right? So usually the cheapest hand sanitizers are going to be the best. And remember that with hand sanitizers, they must be, so hand sanitizers must 
be safe for human consumption. Whoopsie. Human consumption. Okay, because if it gets into the food, you need to know that it's not going to cause anybody some harm as they ingest it. Okay? Perfect. So again, we covered that. Nails must be short, clean, no artificial nails, no finger, uh, fingernail polish, etc. We talked about gloves and finger cuts, right? So I said if I have a cut on this finger, I would use a finger cut over the band-aid, and the band-aid is going onto a finger that was already taken care of, and then a glove. Um, I was at a, at a sandwich shop. It was actually a delicatessen. It was a deli, and, and I saw that the guy preparing my sandwich was kind of trying to stay out of sight. So he made it more noticeable that he was hiding, right? So when I started looking at him, I'm like, why? Why, why the, what's going on, right? And I realized he had this huge cut on his finger, and instead of stopping and taking care of it, he, he was making my sandwich with this cut. So I took the sandwich, I went to the end of the register, and I'm like, and I just left it. I'm, I just put it down. I said, I, and I, you know, I regret not having said anything, but I wasn't in the food safety business at the time, and I just left it there. I'm like, I don't want that sandwich. Um, Really, it, knowing what I know now and knowing what you know now, be polite when you do say something. Hey, I notice you have a cut. Um, would you please put a glove over that? Again, so why did he do that? Because he didn't have a manager or a supervisor or a role model that was prepping him to be a safe food handler. Was it a nasty sandwich guy? No, he was super great, right? But he didn't have this. He was missing this. So that was years ago. I was young. Much younger. I'm not old either right now, right? But so when you're missing this, you've got problems at your establishment, okay? So make sure that this is firmly in place. You want to make sure that everyone is a safe food handler and that's taking place. Otherwise, you're going to get, um, you're, you're going to put your, your, your customers at risk you're going to put your establishment on the line because back then we didn't have the cell phone to record it and somebody, you know, and that's the thing. Fix a problem. As soon as a customer goes to you, thank them. I mean, be so thankful that a customer took the time to, to point something out for you, right? We, we take things personally and we get all defensive. Um, so we talked about personal hygiene, which is further down. We talked about jewelry and aprons, right, being clean. A clean baseball cap is okay, right? Oh, here's one. So you notice I'm keeping the header and the footer, right? Because that is absolutely critical. Can I eat, and I'll put it in a different color, right? Can food handlers eat at the table, meaning they're actually working, right? And notice I said, can they eat at the prep table? So while, while I'm making food, can I be eating? And the answer there is no. No eating at the prep table. Let's change one word, right? Can food handlers drink at the prep table? And the answer for that is yes. Right? So, but here are the conditions for that. Can I drink? First of all, if my boss tells me no, nothing, then nothing it is, right? But on the exam, maybe it's on the exam, like I said, I, I just have to prepare you for everything that's possible, right? So, can I drink at the, at the prep table? Only if the, the cup has a straw, right? Only if there is a lid and a straw. 
So that's the only way it is a yes. If there is no straw, no lid, and I'm just drinking, even if it's out of a bottle, no. It has to have, in order for your yes to be applicable, you must have your lid and you must have your straw. Okay, now I'm going to change one more word again. Can food handlers, right? I'm going to change one more. Can food handlers, and I don't have enough space, I'm going to do this, chew gum at the prep table? And the answer is no. Because as you're chewing gum, a little bit of saliva is being sprayed out. So, um, you got what's going on. The only activity you can do is drink. That's it. Nothing else at the, at the prep table. Right, let me make sure. Do I have, did I miss one? Oh, yeah. So, can handlers... And this I haven't seen a lot in South Florida. Actually, this, this seems to happen more... Well, I don't know. At least where we live, I don't see it. Can they chew... Did I spell it correctly? Yeah, almost. Two seeds. Chewing tobacco, right? That's when they kind of put in their gums. No, no chewing tobacco either, all right? So can they chew tobacco at the prep table? And again, for that, it's no. Uh, by the way, uh, on a separate note, chewing tobacco is like almost guaranteed cancer of the gums, okay? It's, it's horrible to see someone that has lost their gums and their teeth and everything because the tobacco is just sitting there on their, on their tongue, under their tongue, or in between their gums and their lips. I mean, tobacco products are horrible. Chewing tobacco is horribler. Okay, it is, it is awful. Okay, so if you know of anybody that has that little nasty habit, um, go online and look at some people with cancer of the gum due to uh, chewing tobacco. Pretty nasty. All right, so I'm still on the, on the safe food handler. And actually, we're now on page 12, so I'm just going to put that up here because page 12 has a little tiny bit left of, um, of the food handler. And it's something we had already spoken about, but it's important for you to, to revisit it. Whoops. Um, let me put that here. So we're talking about restrict. And we were talking about exclude, right? So which one, which one of these two means to leave out or to keep out, to not allow in? Which is the one that says, ooh, you are sick as a dog, right? So exclude is our winner, means to keep out, right? Restrict means that we need to assign a non-food handler task, right? So let's revisit this one, exclude. What were the five illnesses? I gave you several ways to remember it. One was I gave you the gas station, right? Hess, and I added the letter N. And then the other thing that I had recommended to you was um, the sentence, send sick employees home now. Okay, so those were the five illnesses. Remember hepatitis A, E. coli, salmonella, shigella, norovirus, right? Restrict. So with restrict, if you go to your book, um, so we're talking about um, folks that have a sore throat with a fever, not a headache with a fever, sore throat with a fever, right? Or you've got some kind of, um, you're, you're, you're not feeling well, but it's definitely not these. Okay, so the thing with restrict, that with restrict, if you've got a restrict situation, but you are 
if you if you're if you're working with high risk whoops high risk or at risk populations right then you really need to treat it like that okay because uh, so we're talking about children senior citizens pregnant women and people that are with a compromised immune system so where would I have to treat restrict as exclude I would treat restrict as exclude if I'm working at a hospital a senior citizen daycare um, a school cafeteria right whether it's elementary school grammar schools right um, even the high school systems if you're if you're not feeling well you've got to treat it as an exclude so there's those folks need to not be working in the establishment at all um, all right awesome awesome so that is page uh, 11 and a little bit of 12 uh, again I I covered it all but Please refer to your booklet, and I will see you next time for, what is it, module number, seven, eight, this was nine, ten, module number ten, and on module number ten, we are going to be jumping on page thirteen, and that is the flow of food. Okay, the, uh, we're following uh, a page at a time, give or take. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, lots of learning going on, and I appreciate it every time you log on and, and take care of your videos and your assignments. Be blessed. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.